My name is Wonju Lim. We are at the San Jose Museum of Art. This exhibition is titled California Dreamin'. In this exhibition are five pieces. There is this big installation, there are three light box pieces, and a sculpture. California Dreamin' is part of this series of work that has to do with longing for a place, longing for a time. This particular mini survey has to do with landscape, specifically California landscape, but formally they really have to do with interior and exterior relationship. I wanted to be an architect. You know, I studied architecture maybe a couple of years after I realized that architecture as a practice was not something that I was interested in, yet I was still interested in the formal and the theoretical aspects of architecture. I feel like I'm still pursuing architecture and all the conceptual and the formal aspects of my work really deals with all the things that I've been interested in. I think about my practice as it's kind of a branching. I think like my interest in architecture might be the root, you know, and that it branches off to different areas that have to do with architecture. And then often the branches meet and then they also then depart again. If I were to be an architect, I wouldn't have as much freedom and, and, and equally as much um, challenge. You know, what is the essence of something? What is the, the, the poetics of architecture? When I think about that, I think you know, there's a way to abstract that. You know, so it's not abstraction as um, necessarily moving away from representation, but representation standing in for something that is really important and, um, and you know, something that is real, such as architecture in this case. California Dreamin' has three video projections and uh, something like 140, 150 architectural models. And these models are made of plexiglass and foam core board. And at the time when I made this piece in 2002, early 2000, there were like a lot of these kind of catalogs that you could buy at Home Depot. And the catalog comprises a floor plan that you could order. You could use um, the catalog to order the blueprints. These models are from the floor plans that you could see in the catalog. I often use ephemeral, dispensable, everyday materials. I'm interested in, you know, kind of showing what's inherently in the work. So for example, light coming from a video projection, creating moving and still images, I use this uh, to, to interact with this kind of um, everyday disposable material such as plexiglass and foam. And what we may take for granted that's inherently in the material because it interacts with light creates shadows and reflections and refractions and silhouettes that's part of this installation. I think light and space are codependent on each other. And so I don't think I privilege one over the other. I don't think about one before the other. I think, you know, a spatial interaction is very much part of, you know, how light interacts. The video projection itself, I think about it um, as a medium. The projection itself is medium that becomes, you know, a really inherent and Im important formal language in the installation. The interaction between the subject and an object in the work is something that happens at so many levels, and I think about this a lot. As the subject in space navigates around, you know, and moves throughout this exhibition space, they experience a moment, and then, you know, the, the viewer could be walking around and come back to the same moment, then get a different kind of experience. I'm really interested in that. There is a suspension. There's a suspension of where you are, but also who you are and we're not able to locate ourselves geographically, um, spatially, and that has to do with this kind of an interior-exterior relationship. We know who we are from inside in the, in, in the context of where we are outside. Scale shift is another thing that's like really important. It's, you know, it's kind of a foundational language element in sculpture. The sculpture is bigger than you. 
you are bigger than the sculpture. You are inside the, the installation. You are outside looking at it. And I want there to be always this kind of an oscillation that happens in scale shift and that happens spatially. I've always been extremely interested in not necessarily science fiction, but the rendering of science fiction. So like the aesthetics of a city or cityscape in science fiction. So I think like, you know, Blade Runner, Logan's Run, the aesthetics in the science fiction films have rendered the future in a very specific way. There's this kind of a superimposition of the future and the past. And I think that's really interesting, you know, because it suspends the present. You know, I think for decades, the present has been suspended. There's all these elements um, that has to do with space and time, you know, contraction and um, expansion of time. And I think this is kind of a formal element that I uh, investigate over and over again with a lot of my work. I'm definitely influenced by cinema. I'm influenced by, you know, for example, what is filmic time? What is filmic space? So there's all these kind of like things that have to do with time and space without creating a specific narrative of any kind. All these kind of things are point of departure, much like diving off of a diving board or something, but I need a point to dive off from, you know, such as this idea of longing for a place, longing for a place that doesn't exist, quite personal. The way I approach these subject matters or interests, these interests become like elements, they become factors. Um, in which they weave in and out of each other. I never know what the destination might be, what the ending point might be. And this is one version of many potential within this interest that I started from. <laughs>